Is there a stigma around failure? A little bit. If you don't know something, you get a tutor, you learn the material, and then you pass the test and you move on. If you're not good at something, you really don't talk about it, you really focus on what you're good at. What's the one subject that Greeley kids look, put the most emphasis on? Where failure is uncommon, and if it occurs, it is looked down upon. Math. No question about it. Math. Do you know how many math tracks there are at Greeley? I think there are five total. I'm not sure on that. Do you think it's a good thing that there are so many tracks? I think it's good because you can have more specialized tracks, and so we're not all clumped together into the same track, because each person is not the same ability. Even within the same track, we all don't have the same ability. And also, even though you might think that we have different uh, like feelings about each other, that maybe the highest math track might feel something about the lowest math track, I have friends from all the math tracks, and I don't think it affects any friendships. That being said, the lowest math, I feel like the lowest math track, we all have all learned, and the highest one have learned all the same basic material, but at the same time, they don't have the foundations, I guess, built in their mind. Have you ever heard of dyscalculia? Have you ever heard of dyscalculia? No. Have you ever heard of dyscalculia? Dyscalculia is a debilitating learning disorder that is characterized by inability to understand the basics of mathematics. For example, dyscalculics cannot form a mental number line or grasp the magnitude of numbers. The neural basis of arithmetic is complex, especially when mapping out brain regions. Most mathematics tasks can be traced back to a region of the brain known as the parietal lobe. New arithmetic facts are usually processed using the frontal lobes and interparietal sulcus. Previously learned facts like multiplication or mathematical laws can be accessed by utilizing the left angular gyrus. The occipitotemporal lobe shows how we process stimuli format, such as whether we recognize what we see as a symbol, a word, or a magnitude. Ratios are computed by firing single neurons in the dorsal prefrontal cortex, and the frontal parietal network is implicated in the processing of absolute ratios. The IPS supports the representation of the magnitude of symbolic numbers, so all arithmetic and numerical processes implicate the parietal lobes, especially the IPS. The horizontal segment of the IPS is activated when someone is trying to gauge the size of a number, essentially comparing two numbers on a mental number line. The areas of the brain that control different exercises also shift as a person ages. Neural specialization is an adaptive evolutionary phenomenon that allows the brain to truly compartmentalize different mathematical tasks. Essentially, in each region of the brain, neurons start firing themselves to activate surrounding cells, lighting up a tight network. Early arithmetic learning is based on physical manipulations of sets of objects, so to truly combat dyscalculia, patients need to develop number abstraction and reasoning skills in a very interactive format. By training neural networks during a child's critical period at a young age, dyscalculics can strengthen their math skill and understanding. The clinical approach to finding dyscalculics is to utilize standardized testing. Technically though, abnormalities in dyscalculics could be found by tracking the parietal network of a dyscalculic while they perform some sort of math task. Dyscalculic should have reduced brain activation in exercises involving the comparison of numerosities, the recognition of number symbols, and the performance of general arithmetic. They should also have reduced gray matter in their left, right, and bilateral IPS. There might even be differences in the connectivity of dyscalculic's parietal regions and between their parietal and occipitotemporal regions. For some adults with severe dyscalculia, these structures may not even be fully developed. Dyscalculia is currently diagnosed using pure psychology, questioning patients, their parents, and their teachers. What is the future of neuroscience in the field? Well, as we know, psychology is not an exact science, and questionnaires are probably not the best way of obtaining a definitive diagnosis of disease. The answers to questions can uh, vary depending on who is answering the questions and what they feel about a child's uh, need uh, for math help. Uh, what neuroscience can provide is an unbiased, definitive biomarker for dyscalculia that is independent of the subjective whims of questionnaires. We already know from studies um, in, uh, in cognitive neuroscience that there are changes in the brain, such as in the intraparietal sulcus, when um, children suffer from dyscalculia or generalized math disability also. Um, now, obviously, 
the current current techniques we have to diagnose dyscalculia, um, such as functional magnetic uh, resonance imaging, are not really uh, set up as a high throughput, low cost alternative for families to get their kids diagnosed with dyscalculia. That said, the in the future, um, there will be lower cost non-invasive techniques that uh, will be developed and these can then be used to provide um, both a good biomarker of dyscalculia as well as to be able to see whether the kind of training that we use to help dyscalculic children can actually help uh, reverse some of the changes, uh, structural changes we see in the brain as well. Um, it is important to remember that like many, many mental disorders, dyscalculia is a wide spectrum. Um, there are children who will be very heavily dyscalculic and there will be children who probably just need a little more of an extra help in math. Uh, the good news is that some of the cognitive therapies that we are developing to treat dyscalculia are certainly not harmful to the brain and so they can be used uh, regardless of whether a child is diagnosed with dyscalculia per se or not. Um, they're not uh, they, they're, they can be used regardless of whether there is a true, um, true disease and um, these, these techniques will help children, any child that is struggling uh, with math.